All right, how do you create an effective recipe in freeze drying? Maybe you're frustrated or maybe you're thinking what ingredients are good for something that could be freeze dried? We're here today to talk to Gene Ligman, who actually is one of the freeze drying experts in the industry. Gene, I want to ask you about the recipe side. What is a freeze drying recipe? Can you classify that? Yes. So good question because people hear the word recipe and they think, well, how many, which ingredients, you know, how much flour or, you know, baking soda. That's not what we mean by a freeze drying recipe. It's a process recipe. So recipe is a term that's used in industry, in the manufacturing industry to mean what process steps am I taking stepwise to get from the beginning stage to the end. In freeze drying, what you're controlling is typically the temperature of the shelf, the pressure in the chamber, and the amount of time that each step will do. Now, there's different ways that freeze dryers control themselves. Uh, it, you don't have to manually control a freeze dryer or you'd be tearing your hair out, right? They, this is an automated machine. You press start and then you come back however long and, it, and it's done. So the small home freeze dryers typically use a, a control philosophy called pressure control. So when the chamber pressure goes above a certain set point, it will turn off the heaters until the pressure comes back below and then the heaters will go back on and the pressure will go up and it'll just cycle above and below the the pressure set point until the product is dry enough that there's no longer enough moisture being generated by your product to drive pressure up and you can watch this over the time right let's say you have a, a harvest right with a 500 millitor pressure set point you can watch that um, that that chamber pressure on your control screen, for a long time, it's not gonna budge away from that 500 very much. It's gonna stay right around there. But once you start to get past the point where sublimation is, is happening, right, when you get into the, the back third of your process, you can start to see the pressures drifting down. First, it goes down to 450 and then 350 and so on. And eventually it'll end up maybe around 200 millitor in a small home freeze dryer. So that's pressure control. Pressure control is exceedingly useful in for some products particularly products where you need to have let's call it a fairly gentle freeze drying process because the products are sensitive to having too much heat put in too fast or they or getting the, the shelf too hot another thing that the the harvest rights or the blue alpines of the world control is they have a, a temperature cap right right so when you uh, load up a, reci a recipe um, they have some canned recipes that are in there it will, it will say, well, what temperature do you want, right? 115 degrees or 130 degrees, whatever it is, that's a temperature cap. It's, it's a temperature above which, it's like a second control. If the temperature of your shelf gets above that temperature, it will limit the, that and it'll keep it at that temperature. So it'll never go higher than that. When you have a machine that, um, that runs on pressure control, you often trade away how fast you can do your cycle in exchange for making sure that the pressure in your chamber never goes above a certain point. And why would you want to do that? Because then you're ensuring that the temperature in the ice core, the, where the ice is actually sublimating, that temperature will be governed, governed by that pressure. Laws of physics here, this is thermodynamics, it's called vapor, vapor point. Vapor point or vapor pressure is simply the pressure at which something will turn into a vapor. That's what's happening in your freeze dryer when you control the pressure you're controlling the temperature via that vapor point. A second way of controlling a freeze dryer, which is used mostly in most of the um, commercial freeze dryers, is by controlling sh the temperature of the shelves as opposed to controlling by the pressure in your chamber. This is a way that has more control. If I have a commercial freeze dryer that's got 500 baking trays of product in it, if I'm controlling, you, you can't have all those baking trays be uniformly loaded, nor can you have all the heat distribution in your, in your chamber be uniformly distributed. So if I have one pressure control set point, like the pressure, and I'm controlling all of my heaters based on that one input, then some of the shelves are going to not be dry at the end, and some of them are going to be too dry or possibly even burned. Pressure control is, is fine for a small machine, but it's not so fine for a big commercial machine. You need more zonal control. You need to have a better distribution of control across the entire product to make sure that you get a, an, a much more even endpoint. 
so that when it's done, most of the product is done. And so when you have that inconsistency, which you're saying is, is heat and then the pressure, that's what's causing things to like, quote, not freeze dry once you get it done with the process. Well, what I mean is yeah. when you pull up your product out, some of it's nice and crispy and dry, and some of it's still a little bit frozen in the middle, right? So the part that's still frozen in the middle or not quite dry, you can tell it's just limp or it's, it's not, it's kind of a little bit soft or chewy or whatever. Yeah. That means it needed longer. So, and, and your product doesn't switch. It's not like a light switch. It goes from wet to dry. It smears from wet to dry, right? Across a, 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 t a period of time. Yeah. Some trays are going to get dry first and then they're going to continue to sit there and bake and bake and bake while the ma vast majority, it's like bell curve, right? The vast majority of your product then gets dry. Yeah. And then you're going to have a bunch of trays, you know, on the outliers of that bell curve that are still wet. Meanwhile, the ones that got to dry first are still baking. Hey everyone, David, I'm the host of the Freeze Dry Business Channel, and I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel and the network that I've grown for the Freeze Dry Business community. You can do a couple things. Give this video a like if you're enjoying the content. You can also subscribe to being the more connected to this industry, and that way you get more informed and more videos. By the way, I've got a fantastic opportunity for you to network with other entrepreneurs and people in the industry who are experts that can help inform you to get more experience in this whole industry like Gene. And that's the Freeze Dried Summit happening this year in 2025, September 22nd and 23rd. I hope to have more and more events like this. If you wanna learn more or purchase your ticket to the Freeze Dried Summit, go to the video description right now and you'll go to freezedriedsummit.com and find all the details. I hope to see you there. With a lot of people having home freeze dryers, is a home freeze dryer the best place to to get a recipe down, meaning those different steps in the freeze drying process to kind of nail that down? You can't control the home freeze dryer. You, the only thing you can do is, is load up recipes that have already been basically built in. This is actually the limit, one of the big limiting factors on the difference between a home freeze dryer and a commercial freeze dryer. You can, you can control every aspect of that process recipe that goes from the beginning to the end by controlling the temperature of your shelves or setting pressure limits or whatever. You can do that in a commercial freeze dryer which is very necessary for a larger quantity. Yeah. You can't do that in a small one. You've, so, you've got like a, a, a candy recipe and a fruit recipe and a meat recipe, and they follow a certain way. But look, <clears throat> when you're in commercial production, time is money. The amount of time that you waste trying to get your product completely dry as opposed to mostly dry, that extra few hours that you tack on to the end just so you can be sure, that's fine at home and a little freeze dryer. But when you're doing that at commercial scale, uh, one hour extra on a, on a big commercial machine per day, per, per cycle, is gonna cost you a quarter million dollars in, in lost profits that year. So an hour is not just something you tack on willy-nilly in a commercial machine. You need to try to tweak your recipe so that you're getting your cycle dry as quickly as possible in as uniform a manner as possible in, in order to capture the margins, right? right. If, if you don't do it right, they're gonna be a margin challenged business. Yeah, so I'm thinking of if, I, if my recipe is whole strawberries versus sliced strawberries, right. that's a different process and yeah. extracting a lot more density of those, that water in that whole strawberry versus a sliced at, at thin. Right. So that's why I'm seeing inconsistencies with my home freeze dryer, you would say. That's is, right. Okay. And strawberries are different than apples. And they're all different than blueberries or plums or anything. Anything that's got a skin on it, like a, a nice shiny skin, you better be cutting that in half because you're not going to get a lot of moisture that goes across that boundary. That's the whole point of that skin is to yeah. keep the moisture in while the fruit is, uh, is on the vine. The difference between one fruit and another can, can be a big difference. If you're doing apples, it's fairly straightforward in, say, a home freeze dryer because that's kind of what the, that recipe is built for, is apples or strawberries. But if you're doing mangoes, like ripe mangoes, you're going to have a challenge. Um, it'll freeze dry your mango for you, but instead of taking 24 hours-ish, it might take 48 hours. And why is that? Why is that? You're probably going to have to tweak your freeze dryer to, up to be even gentler. But mango is denser, so it has a little bit less water, but it also has more sugar. So the higher the sugar content in the water, the lower the freezing point. It's like when you throw salt on your, on your sidewalk to melt the ice in the wintertime. Well, guess what? You're lowering the freezing point of that water. 
lower freezing points in your product makes it harder to freeze dry because as soon as you get close to or at what's that triple point that point where the water freezes when yeah. it's vaporizing from ice directly to vapor sublimation if you get above that point it melts and if the if the ice melts in your product while you're freeze drying it, it's called melt back in the, in the industry it causes shriveling and collapsing and chewy food and and, and you'll never get what you want so, so you you have to change your your recipe so an example of that would be um pineapple then yeah because that has a, a lower freezing point yeah because of all the sugar that's in that natural uh pineapple yep so you have to tweak that recipe that's why my pineapple takes a long time to freeze dry <laughs> yeah that's right and, and ice cream is even worse right ice cream is mostly fat and sugar and not that much water it's, you'll actually have a better time freeze drying ice milk right with this ice cream that's not made with cream it's made with milk because it has a higher water content so you'll actually get a better and easier freeze dry yeah it's not necessarily going to be as tasty because i mean everyone knows that cream is really tasty stuff so if you dilute it you're going to dilute it but so expanding on recipes are there things that can't be freeze dried anything that doesn't have a sufficient quantity of moisture to begin with like chocolate right there's not that much moisture in chocolate there's some but that, not much it's mostly fat and solids and sugars it's not going to freeze dry um, it'll melt and it might foam up like crazy you know because when you draw a vacuum on something there's a lot of air gas bubbles that are incorporated into it that you don't even know and if, and if you don't believe me mix up some uh, epoxy at, at some point then stick it in your chamber and draw it in a vacuum and and as soon as you get to about 20 tour you'll start to see all these bubbles come out you, the giant bubbles that you're like where'd that come from well it, those were incorporated into the yeah. epoxy the same thing with your food it has air in it the difference between doing a strawberry and a strawberry slurry is a different recipe because when you make it into a slurry you have different things to consider it changes the way the, the water comes out and you're actually adding air so you can actually have your slurry blow up into foam in yeah. your system too so if you want why would you want to freeze dry chocolate if you wanted to experiment with it is there any application to it so sure i mean because it, it's going to change the texture um, it won't on chocolate but let's say you have chocolate mousse right which is a or, or ganache right ganache is made where you take chocolate and you put in hot cream and it it turns into this fudge like consistency when you freeze dry it's going to change the consistency it's like it's like the difference between a a skittle and a freeze dried skittle right it's a different experience in, in your on your palate okay so but but chocolate's going to be a, a challenge anything with invert sugars um is is not going to freeze dry well so some people have tried freezing freeze drying say swedish fish and they blow up and then as soon as you uh break vacuum they collapse again yeah why is that and the reason is because the invert sugar won't recrystallize invert sugar is just a certain way that you you cook sugar it changes the crystalline formula it's like um it's closer to uh say the um the corn syrup uh, uh what do you call that stuff that's put in all the cans of coke and whatnot you know the oh the uh, sugar cane yeah the or, the, uh, the corn the well it's the it's the corn syrup i can't yeah. remember what it's called I'll it. but anyway um invert sugar is one thing so if you if you try freeze drying a certain product and it just won't free won't freeze dry at the end of the day um it might be that something that you can't do and it might not have other chemistry in that that prevents it should, should someone look at innovating like a recipe like mm. hey i've got i've got my uh, i've got this uh, non-alcoholic slush that i make for for summers for my family fourth of july parties all right. the time and it'd be great if i could basically freeze dry that and then it becomes a powder mm. and you know basically i can make my family recipe slush that's non-alcoholic but uh you just put that quarter cup of that powder into a glass with ice you can put alcohol if you want it or you can just fill it up with uh water and there you go you've got your slush and you, now we don't have to recreate it with the fresh ingredients. Right. Is that, is that just things that like innovation is just trying that those different things or 
should you is there certain things that you just shouldn't even try because it doesn't you're going to waste product because it's not going to freeze dry anyway uh there's some things that i would say don't even bother like chocolate right because you, you you already know it doesn't have much moisture in something like what you're talking about where you're you're freeze drying a liquid or a slurry definitely give it a try right give it a try and if it doesn't freeze dry well let's say that it comes out it still is like fruit leather instead of freeze dried yeah. product dilute it before you freeze dry it give it more water to give it that matrix that something to hold on to so that when the vapor goes away it leaves behind a nice uh, matrix of something and you can you can crush it into powder after that yeah um i mean the, the guys here at boreas freeze dried water right and and they say that what was left was this really fragile matrix like of of crystalline uh impurities from the water so and but i've talked to plenty of people who can't freeze dry fruit juices because when they draw vacuum it just foams and and it, it just blows up in in their freeze dryer well a there's too much air incorporated into it from the processing so maybe you could degas it first but the other thing you might be able to do or have to do is dilute it a little bit give it a little bit more water so that when you freeze dry it it leaves more of a porous ma matrix left yeah but yeah Having your home freeze dryer is a great way to prove that something can be freeze dried. Now, tweaking that recipe so that you can actually make money on it commercially, this is where you want to have a freeze dryer where you can actually get in and tweak the process recipe. How long, what temperature, and do I want to ramp my temperature up so that it, it doesn't like suddenly go from one temperature to another? It's a nice, slow, steady ramp. Yep. Do I want to create a profile over the time that keeps my freeze dryer operating at optimum power input? Something that we haven't talked about is the thing that drives how fast sublimation takes or how, how, how fast sublimation takes place is how much heat you're putting in. It's not the vacuum, right? The pressure does not change your sublimation rate. All that changes is, is the temperature at which you are sublimating. What's actually changing your sublimation rate is your heat rate. And you've got to get the heat in. So if you've got product that doesn't like to get heat in very well, like maybe it creates a really thick insulation barrier, you've got to figure out a way to get past that. What's an example of that? I have heard of people making insulation material <laughs> right, by creating a slurry and then freeze drying it. Um, insulation material resists heat transfer. That's the whole point of it, like aerogels and, and that kind of thing, right? So if you're freeze drying it, and you're having difficulty getting the heat into the into the ice core. So as you as you freeze dry something, you start with a, a particle, and the ice the ice core is the the surface of the particle that you're in. And maybe it's a chunk, or whatever. But but the ice boundary where the sublimation is taking place is right at the outside. But as you freeze dry, the ice core gets smaller and smaller, and this insulation layer gets thicker and thicker as you go in. Mm -hmm. Now the heat has to go from the boundary of your product through the insulation layer to your ice core and you've got bigger and bigger insulation and that insulation has a certain r value it slows down the heat transfer it makes it harder to do so what do you have to do you have to tweak your recipe to make your shelves hotter so you can get the heat going in um, and that's all you can do really yeah. or you can change the way you get the heat in altogether by using a different technology like rf or microwave and those are cannon worms that are very difficult to, to, uh, to tackle. I hope you feel more informed about how to create a recipe in freeze drying and know a little bit more about what goes on in the freeze drying process so that you can experiment with your home freeze dryer that you have in your home or in your existing freeze drying business. And if you wanna learn more about how to start a freeze drying business, there's a couple things that you can do right now. And that is subscribe to this channel right now. It's the freeze dried business. Also, there's a freeze drying event. It's called the freeze dried summit. It's happening this year in 2025, September 22nd and 23rd. And if you wanna purchase a ticket to come to this event in Boise, Idaho, I'd love to see you there. Ticket information is down below in the video description at freezedriedsummit.com. I've got all the information on what is included in this event, as well as who you're gonna see speak. If you're watching this beyond September 2025, well, I I encourage you to still go to freezedriedsummit.com because more future events related to freeze drying is going to be happening at that particular website. So check out the video description right now or follow me to the next video with Gene Ligman of Suntour. Mm -hmm.